the moment of truth. <laughs> uh, how good is that? G'day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks here, and in this video we're going to unbox and review this A-frame cabin retro house by Funhole, set number F9013. It comes included with the Delight Day and Night Lighting Kit. We will start off with an unboxing and see what the set contains. From here we'll take an overview of the set all lit up and some of the features of the built model. We have some brief comments about the figurines included before a time-lapse speed build with commentary. We'll look at the specifics of the light and a slight error in the sticker sheet. We'll talk about playability, value, design and offer some suggestions for improvements. This was provided to us by the manufacturer, but the opinions will be our own, so let's get into it. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be notified when we upload videos. It greatly helps the channel out. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall, or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. It's all come nicely wrapped. Let's uh, get into it and see what's in here. So we have the front of the box, it's actually really nice graphic and it's printed out well. Nice and slick. And then going around on the back, just doing the on off. So let's have a look and see what's actually in it. So it looks like start off with some of the actual day and night lights. Looks like they're funky brick separator, battery pack, one, two, three lights, and tweezers. I love that. The fact it comes with tweezers makes life so much easier. Big chunky thick instruction book. So a stick sheet. Nice and glossy and what do we got there? 420 odd steps. And we start going through some of the bags. So these are all the bags. You've got bags number one through 12, and there's multiples of each. There's about 30 odd in total. But the one thing I did notice is in bag number 12, you've actually got some sort of little figures and things. It could be interesting, because certainly last time one of the criticisms we had was that they didn't have any sort of little figures which put the scale out. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that uh, helps address that issue. One of the big selling points of this kit is obviously the lights, so we'll just go through and have a look at them. You've got a couple in the peak of the A-frame there, another one on the underside of that door light there for the sliding door, and then we've got one for the fire pit, and coming further along, there's you know one for the bedroom, one for the outside lamp there, and then as we come along even further into here, and the battery box there, you got a couple in the actual apex of itself, and then down in here, you got some on the ceiling, and then also that little fire barbecue in there has some light as well. We come around to the side here, you have the strip lighting for the water, which helps give that a really nice sort of feel and glow. And then you've got one for this sort of lantern here as well. So you've got quite a number of lights which go the whole way around, and it gives a really, really nice effect. So just having a little bit of a look at some details, you've got this nice little porch area here with a bit of a swing and a sliding door under here which works nice. And the other door does open as well. Some little logs there for the fires, a little thing here with some food that's cooking and some other little apples and things like that. A nice little brick built tree which is good to see, it really gives it that feeling of being off in the woods. Up on here you've got like a quite a large telescope, it's almost like a gun, and a nice little rocking chair, and downstairs a bedroom down here, and as we keep on coming further around, you obviously have the battery box there, in the top here you have another bedroom with some other paraphernalia and a clock, a little bit hard to see there, and then downstairs is sort of like your little cooking sort of area with the piano and sort of general sort of lounge sort of room to get into. Coming a little further along, I like the way that they've got this little suggestion of the stream and they've also got some really cool funky pieces like particularly wedge plates in these sort of translucent sort of bluish colours. 
and then you keep on coming further around over to sort of like a little fishing area with some extra little fish which are being kept and a bit more of that water hanging off the edge it's pretty tight because on other things you'd be worried about just bumping that and those popping off pretty easily but be moving this around and they've stayed on pretty well this is the first time I've actually seen their figures so these are interesting and got some nice printing and you do have to put them all together which can be a little bit challenging they do have very specific left and right arms and hands so you do need to be careful and just sort of watching them I guess with the minifigure having been ubiquitous for the last 40 years anything that doesn't look like a minifigure is going to be somewhat off in your mind but then again I remember before the minifigure these other sorts of figures that we used to have so the minifigure itself isn't locked in my head and this just gives you a sort of comparison point for an actual one as to how they sort of compare with it these are the other two figures which come in the set so it looks like a mum and a dad and sort of looking at it it reminds me a little bit of a cross between a playmobile figure and a minifigure i think they have their own charm and they are growing on me and now we'll do a time lapse speed build so you can get a sense of how this all comes together and what the building experience is like as with anything you start off with the base and the base by the time you build it all out it's a little bit smaller than a 48 by 48 base plate and in this one it's quite interesting in that it's got a little section down the side you can see there in blue which is for your stream and you're building out a little bit of a garden way and now we're actually building out the elements to the side of the house laying out some of the floors and going through with the tiling and now we're starting to put in the first lot of lights and attaching them all the way around to the different places they need to go to now starting some of the interior with the piano and a few bits of the furniture that actually little fireplace in the middle is quite clever as it holds up the next floor and then you build up some of the front facing of the a-frame itself going through now just doing a bit of the actual floor some more lights and here we do the top part of the front of the A-frame and it has a little cool feature with the actual circular window. There's a couple of beds that you get to build in this and then we go through and we build out part of the downstairs area. This area too, once you actually build it all the way through, it's actually a little bit difficult to get at. Now we're going through and doing one side of the A-frame roof. There's just a lot of these little black tiles and every once in a while you put on these stickers for a bit of texture and those stickers can get quite tiresome after a little while. Here going through and building out the rest of that room, which as you can see there's not really much access for play. Putting some flowers on the outside, give a bit of texture and a bit of ordering. Adjusting some of the lights, just making sure that they're all feeding into the right places and building out some more of that room before heading on to the second side of the a-frame roof again the black tiles the wood texturing on some of the stickers occasionally and it clips together quite nicely at the top and then also at the bottom to hold it in place build out the upstairs window and then heading around and starting to now really put in all the details and the vegetation starting off with this trellis putting in what looks like some grapes and things and from here it's just adding in lots of little details and there's a fair bit of it different leaf colors and grass pieces along the first story as well before heading off and then actually building up a brick built tree which feels nice and solid and doesn't look like it's too janky and missing a whole bunch of leaves install the last of the light connections and finish up building some of these curious little figures that are in the set I do like with this how they've given the lights their own sort of little case and you know it's relatively well done just making it feel that little bit more exclusive and what have you so just having a quick little look in tweezers rave about those standard battery box double A's brick separator they have for theirs and then just looking in at some of the lights themselves We can see what's in each light kit so it looks like you've got a couple of small one by ones and then a couple of two by two rounds next one's connector some extension wires one by one rounds that looks like a little strip of some description another connector more one by one rounds and the usb plug and a quick look at the sticker sheet looks like you got most of the wood paneling in there a few other little ones that should come across not quite sure what that is but we'll find out the one thing that's nice when companies are able to build the lights into the kits is you can plan them out a lot better and they look like they've got these new pieces as well which have little holes underneath 
so that you can fit the wires under there more snugly, which is a really good development because then it enables the wires to be guided a lot better than what was previously. You're not so much clamping the wires and there's less frustration with trying to get it squished down in between pieces where it's not necessarily meant to go because you've also got similar little ones here with the little grooves there, which are over here in the black as well. So it's really clever they've come up with something like that. The bags are pretty tight to open, so it's really good to have a knife handy to get in at them. In terms of playability, I think this model is great. You've got lots of different things for your little characters to interact with and move around with in different spaces and being able to create different scenarios. So I think they've done a really great job in ticking off all those sort of main things you'd expect of like a cabin in the woods. In terms of value, this has got 2,061 pieces, so I'll give you three seconds. Think of a number of how much you think this would retail for. You got three, two, one. In the US at the moment, it's listed at £99 on their website, and in the UK, I've been told it's going to be about £120, which has a little nitpick. The US and UK price, you'd want to be closer together, if not the UK price being slightly less. But when you think that this is over 2,000 pieces here, plus a light kit, if you go off your general sort of guide of about 10p or 10 cents per piece, you'd be looking well over £200 or 250 American dollars. So with this being over half the price of what you'd expect normally, I think the value there is quite phenomenal. And it's a little thing, but you actually get a proper tree with it as well. In terms of design, I think the design of the last year of these have gotten so much better. This is obviously the current one. This was the first one that they released about a year ago, which I did a review for that. And at the time I commented that it just felt too big and was a little bit overscaled for like normal figures and things. Whereas now, if this is one of their normal little figures, that feels like it has all the right proportions. Whereas this one, it just felt like the house itself was just too big if you're trying to have it in figures and put it in cities. And you can even see it with the trees here. They're basically the same height, same type of build. In this one, okay, it might be location, but it feels like it's being dwarfed by the house a little bit, whereas this one, it doesn't feel that same sort of way. And maybe this base is just a bit bigger, so it gives it that chance to just spread out and breathe a little bit more, whereas this one is much tighter on your traditional 32 by 32 sort of size. So for me, I can really see over the course of a year just how much their design sensibility has grown and sort of been refined. And they probably have more pieces and things to play with now, but they both sort of still feel like they could be in the same universe in the same space. If you want to see my previous review on this one, check up in the card or around the video for it. These were the pieces that were left over at the end of the build. The main ones which I would highlight is at the end of the first lot of putting the roof together. You did have a whole bunch of these pieces left over which did seem a bit weird and I was sort of wondering do they get used later on and then you do get almost a full set of spare arms and hands and there aren't too many little small pieces left over so most of the time it is pretty tight on what's in the bag is what you're going to be using so if you do happen to drop something on the floor or it goes missing you do probably want to find it because there aren't too many excess pieces when you consider it there's over 2,000 pieces in this set. This was the leftover sticker sheet. Some of these are extras. In terms of these ones here, the pieces which they wanted these to go onto were the curtains in the downstairs, but when I tried to do it, these are actually an eighth length, whereas the pieces are only a sixth length. And then I didn't realize to the end, they did actually provide the six length versions, so the shorter versions. And then I'm guessing with that QR code, you can go through and find the differences in the instructions. The stickers themselves, as per the instructions, are these two step sort of ones where you lift it off with this extra bit of seal on it, and then you put it onto the brick, and then you take that plastic film and then peel it off. So if you're not used to that, that can be a little bit quirky, and why, particularly when it comes to putting all the wood texture on some of the roof panels, you do start to get a little bit crazy with that when you're doing them so often and having to do sort of two healing steps. The instructions though in general were pretty tight, pretty easy to follow. The usual sort of thing, you just had to be a little bit patient with the tweezers and some of the wires. And I don't think there's too many mistakes in there which I came across. If there was one slight improvement I would suggest is for a couple of these lights, particularly the fire ones, is if they're flickering and flaming. At the moment that's just changing colour because of my finger going in and the camera adjusting to the focus. But there really are a good number of lights here and again it's just little my nitpicks at this stage. Overall, it's a great value set with lots of lights and features. If you're looking for an addition to your city forest, you can't go wrong with this. Thanks very much for watching, and if you leave the word cabin in the comments, we'll know you've watched this far. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel, and a share never goes astray. Here is the other fun hole wood cabin review. 
Here are some other lighting videos you might be interested in. Alternatively, here is another video that might be of interest. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.